Today's recipe steps up the difficulty from what we've been doing all month, which doesn't mean you need special skills in order to execute, but rather a few more ingredients that you may or may not have on hand. And we're using different kitchen equipment to get the job done. For my folks who have been with me for a while, this is what we do. To my new plant sprouts, it's time to level up. This recipe is the Nard Dog take on butter cauliflower in 30 minutes or less. Titled on my website, the Nard Dog Special. Actually, it's not. It's not titled that at all. It's called butter cauliflower, which is a lot less reasonable. Doesn't even make sense. We're starting off by marinating our main ingredient, which is cauliflower. Swap this main ingredient for tofu, chickpeas, soy curls, pum foo, which is tofu made from pumpkin seeds. If you have a bigger family or you need this to go further, like in my family, for example, we have four in the household. I literally just add a can of chickpeas including keeping the cauliflower with no other changes and it feeds all of us with some leftovers. The marinade has two components which are swappable. First is canned coconut milk. And before I make any suggestions, canned coconut milk is affordable, it's anti-inflammatory, and you can't taste the coconut at all in the recipe. All the checks I need for it to be right up my alley. Other options can be blended silken tofu or cashews. You could even do non-dairy yogurt, non-dairy sour cream or non-dairy heavy cream. There's also a smidge of apple cider vinegar in there. It's just enough to give that marinade like a little mm. uh, tangy punch is what that was supposed to mean. Swap this with lemon or lime juice, but I would probably squeeze maybe a whole half in there or at least most of a half. Once you coat the cauliflower and you get it on the baking tray, at the bottom of the bowl, you may have a little bit of reserve marinade just hanging out there. I added that to the baking tray and then it ended up drying up. If you do have any more left, instead of adding it there, hold on to it and later add it into the sauce. The sauce, it is simply incredible. I mean, when your kid is using like naan as a paper towel on the plate, that just has to be a sign. You did something right. My 10 year old, I caught in the kitchen doing one of these. The secret to this sauce is to create flavors that are so developed, it just feels like the sauce has been cooking for hours. So the garlic and ginger, we're cooking for like, five minutes. These are your aromatics and they're typically just cooked until fragrant, which is about 30 seconds to maybe a minute. We're even toasting the spices. I'm telling you, don't skip these steps. When toasting the spices, they release their own oils, helping us reach new depths in taste and aroma, driving us to get that concentrated taste we're looking for. During this toasting, make sure you have a good spatula you can use to scrape the bottom. Things are gonna start sticking here and there, which may sound like a bad thing, but it's not. Also, do not skip out on getting a good masala seasoning and good curry powder. For this recipe, you're gonna want a curry powder that is focused more towards an Indian cuisine, as it will typically have spices that just align more with that culture, rather than something that's an African curry or Jamaican curry, or even like a Thai curry. You don't want those for this one. And if you could only find a seasoning that says curry powder, that's okay. A lot of curries have some crossover within the ingredients. We also use in this one fire roasted tomatoes because roasted vegetables inherently come with that slightly smoky, I've been cooking for a long time, so eat me kind of taste. If you're using fresh tomatoes, you're gonna need about six to eight. This will also require you to cook just a little bit longer to replicate similar, but not exact same flavor. Unless you wanna go for that over 30 minutes kind of thing. I love sauce and I love a lot of it. And for the most part, I love my sauce smooth and creamy. For that reason, we're gonna be bringing this whole thing into a high speed blender. And then we're gonna move it right back into the skillet to add maybe just a little bit more coconut cream if we see it's needed, not only to extend the amount of sauce that we have, but also to control the consistency of what we're looking for. If you're not using coconut cream, you can use vegetable stock. You could also use water. I always taste my sauce before adding in the cauliflower. And sometimes we'll just add a pinch of sugar in order to just cut that acidity just a little bit and it gives that 
well-rounded finish. It's completely optional and any sweetener here would work. I typically try to stay away from ones that will shift the flavor of the dish, sort of like maple syrup. While sugar is not an anti-inflammatory, it is such a minute amount over several servings. My body just doesn't tend to register it in any negative way. But if I'm eating some cookies, you might have to hold me down. I start getting those party legs. Go with brown rice and no naan if you wanna keep your whole meal anti-inflammatory. Otherwise, pick your side and just enjoy. No question of the day this time around, we are going to resume that in our next video. You can find this recipe linked in the description or at my website, makeitdairyfree.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, believe in good, peace.